Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it, I hope you're doing well. And I thought in this video, I'd walk through some tips, tricks and best practices for using the Luminar library. I've been using it quite a bit and I've got more and more photos in it. I've been organizing things and I just thought I'd share some, uh, some things that I consider best practices. I do get questions from time to time. I thought I'd try to answer some of those in this video. I also did an intro video to the library back when I did my tutorial series. You can check that out there. And in this one, I'm not gonna dive into everything in depth. Um, I'm just gonna cover a few topics that are top of mind for me and based on questions I get from you guys. Now, tip number one is just to get organized, and that is get your files and your file structure set up the way that you like it. So here's my desktop. I've got my external drive connected, and that's called Luminar Photos. And within that, I have a number of different folders, really. And these folders are contain images based on location. And so that's what I mean by organization. I like to organize based on location. So I live in Austin. I have a lot of different folders here with images from different shoots in Austin. I've been to Europe, fortunately, uh, quite a few times, and I've got these folders that all represent different trips to me or different components of a trip to uh, different parts of Europe. Also note that I organize mine by location, in this case, country or city, um, and then month and date. So you don't have to adopt my structure. I just say or suggest that you find a structure that works for you. So maybe you shoot uh, senior portraits. So maybe it's Smith High School class of 2020, and then there's your folder. Maybe it's Jones High School class of 2020, Jones High School class of 2019, or 2021, or 2022, whatever. You can organize it like that. Maybe your wedding photography, organize it by year, and then month, and then name of the bridal party. Again, it just depends. You choose what works for you. My point is just, Make sure you find a structure that's organized in a way that you understand so you can quickly get to the images because that's really what it's about. Speaking of images, I highly recommend that you don't use an internal hard drive and instead you put your photos on an external drive simply because if your system crashes or you decide to upgrade your system, you don't want them all on the internal drive because then you gotta move them to an external drive and then move them um, you know, back to the internal drive on the new system. It's much easier. Uh, to make them portable, which is put them on an external drive. I started with like two terabyte drives. I went to four terabyte drives, and now I'm on 10 terabyte drives. So I'm not trying to sell you hard drives. I'm just saying, figure out what works for you, what size you need, and I recommend having at least two or three. I've got three of each. Um, and so I've got three of these 10 terabyte drives. I have one is my primary, which is this one, and then I have another 10 terabyte and a third 10 terabyte and a copy on each. Get organized, stay organized, and stay safe by having them on an external drive. Okay, speaking of folders in Luminar 4, the folders in Luminar just mirror the folder structure that's on your drive, in this case, an external hard drive for me. Um, and that's all it is. It mirrors the folder structure that already exists. It is a physical representation of that. Whereas I'll get to albums in a minute, albums are virtual. So I've got all these folders here on this external hard drive and I come over here to my Luminar and you can see, let me open this drive. You can see I've got, here I've got Austin, Canada, Central America, Austin, Canada. Okay, I have not added Central America to Luminar 4. Same with drone images, I do have Europe, I did not add Sydney and I did not add Texas. Within Texas, I have a subfolder called Texas Hill Country. That's not here. So we're gonna add, a, uh, add that Texas folder over here. So I'm gonna say add folder and I'm gonna say Texas, it's already there. I'm gonna say add folder. It's gonna drop it in and note that it took the subfolder with it. So if I click on the subfolder, these 20 images make up the 20 images that are in the Texas folder overall. So that's a great way, using subfolders I think is a great way to stay organized because within each category, whatever your massive overall folder category could be, you can have different things. So just like in my Europe folder, in my US folder, I'll pick the name of the city and then the month and the date, right? So San Francisco, a bunch, summer trips, which covered a lot of area, New York City, Nashville, whatever. So. Um, it just allows me to stay organized, and those subfolders allow you to further stay organized. Now, if you want to add more folders, I've got two more folders here. Let me move this. Uh, some, some stuff from the Texas coast and also the Cadillac Ranch, which is up in Amarillo. Both of these folders are Texas photos, so I'm going to drag them over here to Texas, and those folders are going to populate here, and this is, again, on my external hard drive. 
that's a physical representation of what you're seeing. Now I'm gonna go back in here to Luminar and you will see that now Cadillac Ranch, I've added 10 photos from there and the Texas Coast, 11 photos from there and they're now as subfolders in my greater Texas folder, which has now grown to 41 images. So again, subfolders come over with it. Thus, when you import a folder, the subfolders and the images come with it. And so it all, again, it's just a physical representation. It's a mirror of what's physically happening in your folder structure. Now here's, I went, went into this Texas Hill Country um, folder here. And one of the things that I've heard people say is, well, you don't see the file name when you click on it. And that's true. You don't see the file name. You'd have to go click on info, right? But let's say I do want to see the file name, but just by popping around photo to photo, I found a way to do that. If you click on view and say show tab bar, you will see this little tab bar up here and that has the file name in it. DSC underscore 0048.nef, right? If you click on this, DSC underscore 0048.nef. So it's the same thing. Now I'm on a Mac, I have no idea if that works on Windows, but it is a way so that you could skip over here and say, what's this file name? Oh, that's 1827, what's this one? Oh, that's 003, whatever. Not a big deal, but it's a little tip there that I came across. There's another thing that I've heard people talk about, which is, hey Jim, I, maybe I wanna edit the photo twice. I wanna have a virtual copy, and that's something you do in like in Lightroom where you make a virtual copy, and then you can edit, 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 and that way, um, you know, you have the four or five different versions of the same photo. Sometimes you want to do that. Well, maybe I want to do that. There's not a way to build or make a virtual copy in Luminar. But let's say I want to make two versions of this truck. Maybe one's a black and white and one's kind of a crunchy HDR looking thing. So what do I do? Well, I can go to the folder structure and I'm in Texas and that was in Texas Hill Country and that was 003. I could just hit Command D and that makes a copy. Again, that's a Mac command. It, I don't know what it is in Windows, but I'm sure there's something that you can hit hotkey with a D or something to duplicate it. Anyway, I just duplicated the photo. And guess what? Remember, the folder structure on your system is mirrored in Luminar, or in other words, Luminar reflects what you see in your system. Uh, so guess what? I now have two copies of the photo. So I have the original, and if you go over here to look at file name, dsc0003.nef, and there's the copy.nef. So I now have two of those raw files in case I want to make two copies of the photo. So that's a, a cheating way, if you will, to make a virtual copy in Luminar. Okay, let's go back to the library and let's talk about albums. Okay, albums are different than folders. Uh, so folders, as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Folders are physical, albums are virtual. So al albums can contain photos from different folders and you can create them on anything that you want. So I've been going through, as I've edited photos from different locations, I'm starting to make albums with my edited photos. And the reason why is maybe someone comes to me and says, hey Jim, I really wanna buy this photo from Dublin. Where do you have it? And maybe I haven't put it in my portfolio and maybe you know they just saw it on Facebook or whatever, you know, and they said, God, I really want to buy that. Or I just want to know more about it, Jim. What's the information about it? I don't have to go through, look through all my folders in Europe to find the Dublin one because I went to Dublin February 14, uh, April of 15, January of 12, May of 13. So I've got five different trips to Dublin there. And I would be like, golly, which one is it? Well, if I know it's an edited photo, and guess what? It is because I shared it socially in this example. I can just click on Dublin edits and I've only got three in here. I haven't had time to really do a lot of this. But I've got three photos from Dublin that I've recently edited that I can just say, oh, you were talking about the four quartz photo. There it is. It doesn't matter to me which physical folder it's in. If I've got it in a virtual album, there it is. I can find it quickly. So that's another way to get organized. I did the same thing with Prague. I've got a couple of photos there. And I've been going through some of my Italy folders as well down below and creating an album up here that's virtual. And this pulls from different places. Like this is Florence, that's Florence but that's Milan, that's Rome, you know, so I've got, by the way, let me show you in just case you wanna see that, Italy, I've got a different, we went on a big trip in 2016, so I've got Florence, there's Milan, there's Rome, there's Venice. I've got different physical folders with all the photos in it, but the ones that I've edited and finished and wanna put in my Italy edits album, I can just do that. Quick and easy, and all you do is you just drag it from wherever it is over here, to over there. Now note, because it's virtual, it has absolutely no impact whatsoever on the physical folder structure, either in Luminar or on your hard drive. It's completely virtual, untouching 
the folder structure in Luminar or on your drive. So I recently went out and took a bunch of night photos in Austin. I got a, a upgraded camera body and I went out and I took a bunch of photos and you know what, I just wanna go in and I wanna take all these edited night photos and make an Austin Nights um, album, right? So I could go through here and just say, okay, well that one's edited, I can tell. It's got the little, um, if you didn't know that, it's got the little thing up here. Um, so this is where you get into ratings. Now you can say show all photos and you can do your ratings like five stars. So maybe I like this one. I could hit five on my keyboard, which automatically makes it a five star photo. But let's say I don't really think it's a five star photo. It's more like a two star photo. So I could just hit two instead. Uh, you know what? I don't really think it's that great. I'm gonna put it, hit zero and just reset it. So that's a great way to flag your images. And that comes into the ratings here where you can then sort them by how many stars they have. But hey, guess what? You can also sort them by edited. So. I don't have to create a virtual album for edits. I could just come in here and say, well, I just wanna find the edited photos. And hey, here you go, here's all my night shots with my new camera. And you know what I am gonna do? I am, I'm gonna highlight all of those and I'm gonna create a new album and I'm gonna call this Austin Nights, Night Shots. And they're all added in there. And so even though I could sort in that album by edited photos, guess what? I've got some night shots in another album that's down here. And in this one, I'm gonna say all photos and edited, and I've got two more night shots. So I'm gonna take those, and here's where you can just come over here and say, okay, there's my Austin Nights album. I'm gonna drag this over there and stick it in there. And now I've got 30 photos in there, two from one folder and the other 28 from a different folder. Now, if for some reason you're in here and you decide, you know what, that, that is a night photo, but I don't really like it, you can just highlight it and delete it, and it removes it from the virtual album. However, that photo is still in the physical folder. You did not get rid of it from Luminar. So this is another great way to organize images because you could create an album uh, for, maybe you have two, two or three children, right? And you could create an album for each, and you could pull f photos from any different folder that that uh, photo of your child belongs in, um, and then you could drag it over there to an album and create a virtual album just for your daughter or just for your son or whatever. And that allows you to have images of that person all together, even though physically in the folder structure they may reside in different areas. So again, just another neat organization tool that's built into Luminar. Now let's talk about trash for a second. Uh, I'm in single image edits. I've got a photo here. Let's say I don't really like it. I just wanna get rid of it. I'm gonna move it to the trash. I can just drag it over there and it's gone from single image edits, it's now in the trash. So even though you've tra trashed it, you can go to trash and still recover it. So you're not gonna automatically, accidentally delete a file from your library or your drive structure. Um, let's say it's in trash and you empty trash, you do get a warning there, it'll be moved to the system trash, you can't undo it. So I'm gonna say sure, I don't need that image, and it's gone. It has been removed from my trash folder, it's been removed from Luminar, however, I do have it in my system trash. If I go over here, there it is. I could restore it from there. So just keep in mind, it's basically a system of checks and balances as it relates to emptying trash and removing uh, images from Luminar. Okay, and then the next thing, and the last thing I'm gonna talk about is over here is the catalog. So you can click File Catalog, and the catalog is basically a database of all your edits and adjustments and ratings and things like that that you do in Luminar. And it's very important that you have that file because that is the intelligence, if you will. So when you click on catalog, you have the ability to create a new catalog, which you can do, or you can open an existing catalog. So if you have multiple catalogs, some people will create a catalog just for, you know, like an event or something. You can create different catalogs and you could bounce between them. And then each of those catalog files, when you choose it, those images will be reflected in Luminar as long, of course, as you have the photos connected in the right drive to your system. In other words, if you don't have the photos on a drive connected to your system, Luminar is not gonna see them. Okay, so catalog, if you wanna see where it is, you can say show in Finder, and it'll pop up and show you this. And on a Mac, it resides in Pictures, and you'll see that it's under Luminar 4 Catalog Files. Now, I've got a second catalog that I was doing for test purposes, so if I wanted to switch catalogs, that would be the other one that I could choose. I don't really need it, it was just a test catalog. This is my actual catalog, but as you saw, when I said file, catalog, and show and finder, it took me to the catalog that I'm currently in. Now I can close that, there's also another option here to say file, catalog, 
and back up. So you can click back up and that's going to take your catalog file and um, create a backup copy of it. And I recommend doing this on a reasonably frequent basis because again, the catalog file contains all of your edits. So it's important to keep that um, safe somewhere. And what I would do is back it up and then save that copy somewhere else, maybe in Dropbox or on a different external drive, that sort of thing. But that is your database file of all your edits in Luminar. You're going to want to keep a copy of that safe somewhere. And of course, you have the ability to restore from backup. So if you click on that, you could go find your backup file and then click open and then restore it if you happen to have lost it. So that's really it, my friends. That was some tips and some tricks and some best practices for working with the library and the catalog within Luminar. We talked about getting organized. We talked about folders being a physical representation of your photos. We talked about albums being a virtual representation of your photos. We talked about ratings. We talked about virtual copies. We talked about the trash folder and of course the catalog file itself. And hopefully that's helpful and hopefully that answers a few of the questions I've been getting. I do appreciate it very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And give me a thumbs up if you like this. Leave me a comment if you have questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And um, I'm going to continue exploring things in the catalog and doing more and more with it. I, I really think it's, it's pretty solid. I like it quite a bit. So thank you for watching. And uh, I'll be seeing you soon, my friends, with more videos. Have a great day. Take care and adios.